Well, I'm delighted to be joined by Steve Robinson. Um, obviously, this man is someone who's, who's come to fruition in the last year in the boxing scene, and it's it's quite hard not to um, not to not to gravitate towards him with his personality and then what we see uh, in the ring and out the ring. So I'm delighted to be joined by him. And I got to say just before we start, um, you've been really responsive all the time on 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 Instagram and when I'm trying to get this interview. So um, thanks so much for for that. No, thank you. I appreciate every, you know, I appreciate the, the time that you've given me as well as, as me giving you, you your time. You know, I appreciate that you're wanting some some information, feedback and interview off me. Yeah, um, yeah, it's just great to speak to people in boxing and um, I'm just looking forward to this. So, um, yeah, um, how, was your, how was your Christmas New Year, first off? Yeah, I got, got, got COVID uh, on the 19th of December, so it was... Well, to be to be fine, I was uh, to be fair, I was fine. We were, you know, we we're all we we're all all right, but it wasn't wasn't what what normal Christmas would be. But yeah, it was it was all right. Obviously, I was meant to be fighting on the fifth of January before the before the British Boxing Board announced that there was no fights in January. So, you know, I was I was I was focused on that. I was training hard over Christmas, and and then that obviously happened, and the date got changed to February, so I had to stay focused all. All the way through, really. Yeah, was it a bit gutted not to be fighting in January? Uh, yeah. Listen, it, it, luckily, luckily, it's been, it's been. But it, for me, I was, I was more annoyed that it sort of was deja vu of last year, and you know, there was more, there was more things coming out with, with with COVID and the, it was just exactly what happened last year. There was no fight in January last year. And I just thought, oh, this is, this is just happening all over again. And after a two year setback because of COVID, it just, it just, it was like, like I say, it brought back bad memories, but the move the day through to February and that I were focused, whether or not it was behind closed doors or whether or not Cardiff was going to allow people in Sky had said February 5th, that's the date. And, you know, I, I was happy that I had a date and kept, carried on training all the way through. Yeah, hopefully we, we never really ever have to go back to behind closed doors. Um, but obviously the February looks stacked now. I mean, there's so many great fights. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward. It's going to be such a good month for boxing. Um, yeah, just talk about um, what, what you've been up to this week. And obviously you've been sparring with... Um, with Phoebe Fury and um, a couple of other names in there as well. Cash Alley, I uh, saw on an Instagram story as well. Um, just how how's it all? How's that whole experience been? Yeah, so I was when 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 Huey fought Marius Wack. I was down there for three months. Uh, back back last last October, November, December. Um, come come quite close to Huey and Peter and and you know his his family and his coach coach and. And it was obviously now we don't know we don't know a date for Huey, um, but we're expecting it to be early March. Um, and you know he contacted and and said we haven't we haven't got a name yet, but we've had a few names drafted through and would love you to be part of the camp. So it, unfortunately, within the northeast, there's not many professional heavyweight boxers, so so to go travels essential and. I've got a good, I've got a good team around us who who take us places or or allow us to go and travel because I think I think traveling is one of the most important things within within boxing. If you if you if you're happy with your home comforts, then you're in the wrong sport. Yeah, definitely. Um, could you can I ask you about Huey Fury? Just because for me, he's such a strange one because he, he's 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 been in the world title fights and obviously come up short, but he, he took him on really young when perhaps he he could have. Could have waited, but I guess there's no. I guess you get offered it. You have to. You have to take a fight like that, especially at that time as well when the belts are spread out. Um, obviously he's he's trying to where he is now. He's he's still young for heavyweight, but we know the abilities there. He's a fury. We know he's got a great genial take on anyone. For me, it's always been there's been a bit of a lack of power, um, especially when it when he's been coming up short against these, these more elite heavyweights. Um, what's your opinion on him as a fighter? No, I don't think I, I don't think the see, see people said the exact same about Tyson Fury. He, he lacked power, he didn't have much power. And 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 for me, you do, if if you if you know you can box for 12 rounds and you can box somebody's head off, why why do you need to, you know, why do you need to have power when you when you've got that ability and speed equals power? 
So when he's tippy tappy in you with five, six shots, and then hogs a big one over the head and the brain's already scrambled, you know, the, the, this is what this is what people don't realise. And for for me, like power's great. You know, people like to see knockouts and people appreciate knockouts and that's that's the problem with heavyweight boxing everyone wants to see you knock someone out within within a minute or two minutes or a round or two and unfortunately the higher you get that's not always going to happen and and you become you become sort of you know look 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 at Tyson Fury Tyson Fury up until he fought John e. Wilder he, he boxed Klitschko's head off but Everyone talks about Anthony Joshua's fight with Klitschko because he knocked him, you know, he knocked him out. But realistically, it's it, it's it's an art. Boxing is an art, and to, it, it's about getting, you know, hitting someone and not getting hit. And I think I think Huey's amazing at that, and I think Tyson's amazing at that. And you know, regardless whether they possess the power, I think I think Huey will go a long way. Just, just to his ability, and he's got a fantastic chin, a great work rate, and he's awkward. He's very, very awkward. A spy, he switches. He's, you know, he's constantly working you, and you, you cannot really work him out. It takes four or five rounds to work him out, and before you've worked him out, he's changing his game plan once once he goes back to the corner. So, it's it, he, he's a fantastic person to be around, and and as well as obviously him being there, I've got I've got cash there as well. Um, and I've got I've got one of his cousins there who's going to be turning pro sometime soon as well, um, Tom. So it's it's a good it's a good camp to be in. There's some there's some good good rounds getting put in. Um, yeah, so look forward look forward to seeing where Huey can go. Really. Yeah, I just wanted to get that insight. Really, obviously you would have sparred him as well. I mean, obviously that's great for you because he's been at those levels, and obviously like you said he's awkward. He's hard to hit. I'm, Imagine obviously when you're fighting in these when you're fighting early on in your career, you are fighting people who are, you know, the journeyman type or people just to build your record and start, which you do need to, to get that experience. But to go against someone like like Huey Fury, I mean, how, how how did you get on really? I mean, obviously your sparring stories stay stay in the gym, but you know, just in general, you know, how did you get on? Yeah, it's, I mean, I've done way over two hundred rounds with Huey. Um, over, I mean, I've been there for the last three weeks, and before that, I was there for three months. And you know, it's it's sparring, and and you know, you you work on things, you try things, and what you're doing in the gym, you'll try. And you know, you, anybody who thinks sparring's to take somebody's head off or knock somebody out is is in the wrong again, is in the wrong sport. You know, sparring's there to work on things that you've been working on, practicing, and. You know, you've you've obviously wearing eighteen ounce gloves. You've got your head guard on, so it's it's good because I can try things. He can try things. We'll work with each other, but at the same time, we're obviously, you know, we're we're there in a fight with each other. And there's there's rounds where we're toe to toe for the full three minutes, and there's rounds where we're you know we're practicing things, and that that that's that's how sparring goes. And it doesn't matter who I'm in with, uh, you know, I'll tr- I'll try things and things will work, things won't work. And that's what your coach is out there watching for to, to come back and say, okay, that, that didn't work. Why didn't it work? And let's let's try and adapt that and, and move things, move your foot that way, move your so so yeah, it's it's you know, it's no I think I think it's um when people say what happens in sparring stays in sparring, I, I don't think it's it's that as such. I think it's more of a it's more of it, you know, in sparring, you see somebody's legs are gone, you see somebody's eyes are gone, you back off. You don't want to, you're not going to jump on them and finish them like you would in a fight. You know, you've you've, you've caught someone with a big shot and they're, they're a bit wobbly, you, you back off and give them however long they need to get back into it. And that's the difference with sparring and, you know, and fighting. And you, you have a respect for the person in front of you, as you do when you fight. But at the, at the same time, when you're in that ring on fight, mate, like all, all, all you focused on is, you know, you either get knocked out or you're knocking him out or, you, or the referee's lifting your hand no matter what. And, and that's the mentality that you've got to have. You've got to be able to switch in there when it's, when it's fight night. Yeah, I definitely agree. It's those things when you, know, you hear the stories. It was like when Dubois was about 18 or 19 and he apparently put down AJ and stuff like that. And I don't really like it's a bit awkward when you see it come out because you feel like they're breaking the, the rule of, you know, stays in the gym. But, um, but yeah, yeah just, well, just add to us, yeah. 
Yeah, but like I say, it's for for me. I've, I've I would never, even even if I was fighting somebody who I've knocked out and sparring, I wouldn't bring it up in the press conference or a touch wood. Fortunately, I've never been put down, never been put down. So that'll touch, like I say, touch wood. <laughs> that'll never come up in press conference for me. But you know, go, going forward, I, I know I've knocked, I know I've knocked people out, and if I ever come across them people. I'll never sit there and go, oh, what about the time I put you? Because listen, sparring, if you're going to get knocked out anyway, sparring's the best place for it to happen because that's where you learn. Why did you get knocked out? What did you do wrong? Did you lean over your front foot? Did you leave your left hand lazy? So that's that's where you learn. So, you know, it's like a goalkeeper letting 10 goals in and, and training and then going and having the game of his game of his life on, you know, on a Saturday. It's it's not about what happens in sparring. It's not about what happens in training. It's about what happens on the night time. So, you know, if if I am going to get knocked out, I, I definitely want it to be in sparring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, obviously, Savannah Marshall's there too. Obviously, a, a fellow Geordie as well. Um, was she jumped in the ring? Obviously, you know, we know she hits hard. Um, <laughs> she wasn't jumping uh, with you, was she? Savannah. <laughs> Savannah spars, Savannah spars, uh, as well as the, there's a couple, there's a couple, there's a the guy called Michael as well who who Pete has got. He's got April Hunter, um. So we've got we've got a female called Georgia O'Connor who who trains out of our gym, XGB girl, uh, one and all. And then she she comes down with her and spars April, um, and Savannah Savannah's got her own spar and sorted with. With, I've never actually seen Savannah spar another female. She only spars males, <laughs> and she she holds her own against them. It's 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 crazy. Our, our skills are just next level. She's and she's such a genuinely nice girl as well. On top of on top of it all, you know, she's just such a nice character. So it's it's a very good gym to be around. April's a great character. Huey's a great character. Pete has a great character. Yeah, Huey's a great, she, just a great boxing man, isn't he? He is, and you know it doesn't matter whether or not you're sparring. He's so you're sparring. His son, he'll still come over and offer your advice and tips. And you know he's just he's a boxing connoisseur, and all he wants is is for the best for everyone. He's he's a genuinely nice guy, you know. And and I can see why why you know Savannah and Huey and and hopefully April being a local local lass has you know becomes big stars off the back of him. Yeah, he's brilliant, brilliant boxing man. Um. Can we just talk about your 2021? And obviously, it's it's when you've sort of burst onto the scene in a certain way, I guess. Um, it, with that big knockout as well in your last fight. I mean, the big right hand lands and it's it's sort of game over in it. And before you know it, everyone wants a piece of you. Um, how have you sort of adjusted to to that? Um, sort of, I guess, fame. I guess, has your life changed massively in the last year? Uh, it's say 2021 was a weird weird year because. I turned I turned professional in 2019. I had my first fight in the September. I had my second fight in the December. 2020 come and I had a fight on the first of March, and then COVID hit. So I had from turning pro. Obviously, I had a great amateur background. I boxed for GB, and then I turned pro. And within within six months, I'd had three fights and it war on the rise. Then COVID come along, and I had signed, we knew we were signing with Sky, but Matchroom still had a five-fight deal with Sky. So when COVID come along, I was meant to officially sign with Sky June 2019. But then COVID come along and through a spanner in the works, and because obviously there was nothing went on for so long, Eddie Hearn was still in, in a contract with Sky. So that obviously got postponed, my contract got postponed, then I ended up saying, I, I quit boxing in February 2020, I thought I can't be arsed with this anymore, there's there's nothing going on, it's it's up in the air, I don't know when my next fight's going to be, and then we got a phone call in, in June, um, offering us to sign with Black Flash and Frank Warren, that, that was great, went down, signed the contracts, were fighting in Victoria Warehouse in July. Great. Then there was things went wrong with contract contracts, things behind the scene, nothing in my power. 
I got pulled off that show, and again, July come, I thought, yeah, shite of this, I'm done, I'm done. I say to Mark, I say, I'm done. I say, I, I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm totally, I give up on boxing, man. I say, it's been, this is, you know, we're talking 18 months now with, with no income. Fortunately, I, I had some fantastic sponsors on board that carried on, you know, giving us, giving us me, me funds to stay afloat. And, and I just thought, I've given up six years of my life you know, going on holidays to Krakow on stag do's and drinking water and 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 going on runs while I'm on, you know, I'm on holiday with, with the lads to Tenerife and I'm out in the mountains running. And I thought I've given up six years of my life. I haven't lived my life. I haven't enjoyed myself. And, you know, this is now, I'm 18 months still in the same boat. And then uh, July, that was in July. And then August... Mark rang us and he says, listen, Stephen, he went, I need to see you. I've, I've had a phone call off Sky. And I says, listen, Sky, it's, it's a load of shit. It, it's not happening. Blah. And he went, he went, no, no. He says, can you drive up to mine? And, and I need to see you because, you know, this is this is a serious thing. And drove up to Mark and he had the contract in his hand. Um, and I was reading the contract and I was like, wow, it was, it was a bit like, it, 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 you know, all... I sort of I'm a I'm a I'm a great believer of if if you want something if you work hard and, and you know it'll, it'll come to you and as I say as as much as I had in my head I had give up I was never going to give up I, you know in in my head I sort of think and now I've done it, but I, it. you felt it deep I was inside. still going and training and I was still sparring and but I thought when it comes to you know I'm looking for a job and I'm going to and then we got to sign this contract and obviously I, I fought and I, October 16th and it, it from I can remember I fought Saturday October the 16th and I remember coming home in a, in a pebble dash council house and I remember coming home and watching myself 10 10 o'clock at night live on sky on a on a television that I pay monthly for from Littlewoods and I remember just sitting in sitting in my chair Watching, watching, you know, in a, in a council house, watching myself, and when you searched on on Sky, when you searched for for the boxing, I was the picture that come up, and I just remember looking, thinking, this is this is surreal. Like I'm just I'm just an ordinary kid who, you know, just from a from an ordinary estate, and and all this just become. And it started a sort of, and I'll never forget where I'm from. I'll never forget who I am. No matter how big I got, I'll always remember and appreciate everyone that's been there from day one. Always, no matter no matter what happens. And it was, it, it's been a fantastic, fantastic, you know, journey from the back of Newcastle and obviously fight again in two weeks and I'll hopefully be back out in Newcastle soon. So it's it's just I'm just enjoying the ride and I'll you know I'll I'll take it take it with a pinch of salt. But at the end of the day my eyes are focused on on a British title within the next 12 months or a Commonwealth or in English. Yeah, let's talk about our next fight then obviously um it's a huge card for starters. I mean wow it's uh it's boxer's probably biggest one yet um all the way through. Um I guess you're just looking for the same result again, just to keep the keep the momentum, I guess, and the consistency going. Listen, it, it, it's I've, I've me third me third fight in. I fought a negative Phil Williams, and I went looking for the knockout, and the knockout the knockout didn't come, and I looked shit because he looked shit, and it. If I had a, if I had a box him, I probably would have stopped him. But because I was loading up and and everything was the the fight with Reese Barlow, what people so it was one minute fifteen seconds. He spat his gum shield out for twenty five seconds. So realistically, the fit that I stopped him in a minute fifteen. It was a minute forty, but the gum shield was out for twenty five seconds. So if you look at that, people are sitting going, "Well, he's shit. He can't box. He didn't look." You, you know, you read the comments, and I'm thinking, how can somebody sit? from a minute 15 and if you watch the fight 40 seconds in I catch him with a left hook and his legs were gone and he went up against the ropes and that's where I'm hitting him then he spat his gum shield out so I knew from there he was gone 
I heard him wince with a body shot. I seen him spit the gum shield out. And then from then, I thought, I've got you. You know, so of course I went for, of course I went for the knockout because I knew from that left hook, when I seen his legs go, when I seen his eyes go, and when I seen him go into a negative sort of against the ropes, I knew, right, that's it. And that's why, obviously, I went for the knockout. And fair play to Rishi come out and he swung that big right hand. And obviously, I've slipped it hard the right hand and the, uh, sorry, the left hand, the right hook. But with, with this, with this fighter, you know, I, I'll box him, I'll pick him off him. If I say that the knockout's there, if I say that he's hurt, then yeah, I'll go for the knockout. But at the same time, I need to show that I've got the skill set and the boxing ability to 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 to, to fight for you know, to, to be a part of Sky and show them what I'm about. And if the knockout comes in a minute and a half, then the knockout comes in a minute and a half. But it's very important to make sure that you don't go looking for the knockout and just allow it to allow it to happen, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um obviously it's you are fighting outside of Newcastle as a pro for the first time, obviously part of huge arena. Um Moving up in the world, it must feel it must feel good to to be on that card and and have that big arena. Yeah, definitely, and it's going to be hard because you know if if you Google Stephen Robinson, there's a fighter from Cardiff called Steve Robinson, um, who 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 fought Prince Nazim in the same arena. So you know to go <laughs> to go to Cardiff with the same name as a as a Cardiff legend is going to be it's going to be quite hard but i'm looking i'm looking forward to it and you know i i've i'm i'm i just appreciate what sky sports and boxer are doing and i appreciate that that you know them them giving us this fight and and allowing us obviously this fight was meant to happen on the 12th of december um williams obviously toys toys rotate a cuff then it got moved to january and you know january got pushed back then it's being moved to February. So realistically, I want six this year. So it's ideal because it's early on in the year. That allows us to get another one out in April, then June, you know, and then move into the... And then I can get the six out by the end of the year. So I am looking forward to being on, on a big card and showcasing. And hopefully I've I've managed to clear my sky spot um, after the last, the last knockout. And hopefully that I will be boxing live on Sky and and show showcase what I am about. Yeah, definitely. Um how, how do you see the main event going then obviously um Liam Williams versus Chris Eubank Jr. You know what Liam Williams I think Liam Williams is very underestimated. He went over to America and you know nobody nobody wanted to to to, to go over there and fight fight the guy he fought and he went over and he held his own and he lost lost on points but I think I think Chris Eubank, if he goes in there with a mentality of, of boxing his head off, I think I think Williams makes that ring feel very small, and he he comes on you and he sits on your chest, and he's 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 he's, he's the middleweight Derek Chisora. He, he'll make it as hard as he can for you, and he'll sit on your chest, and he'll he'll you know he'll, he'll go toe to toe with you if, if need be for twelve rounds, and he's a tough, very tough sort of, you know, former sort of style. And he's got that mentality of, he's not a multi-millionaire driving around in Lamborghini. He's living in Dubai for nine months at the time. You know, he's he, he's got that mentality of, I want this more than you want this. I need this more than you want this, you know. And for me, I think, I think being... Being this underdog and, and wanting something in life so much more than someone gives you, you know, gives you so much, so much more than than what what you bank you bank sort of, you know, he's 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 he's, he's sorted, he's made. Um but I think I think you bank could 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 box his head off if he wants to, but if he gets into I think Williams is a very, very tough fight. I mean, I think you know, he's, he's he's hard. He's got a jaw like granite, and he, he hits hard. And I think I think he could cause an upset. You know, it could it, it is a fifty fifty fight. It's a fantastic fight. And I remember when obviously it was meant to be the same fight as Nigel Ben for on a match room show. And I remember so many people commenting saying, you know, there, there was a post put up, and it was like, who who do people want to watch? You Bank or Nigel Ben? I remember people saying how how much they're looking forward to this fight. And 
you know, I think I think a lot of people are really, really looking forward to it. Man. I think it could be it could be an upset on the cards, to be honest. Yeah, potentially in, in Wales as well. I like the I like the idea of the contrast there. Ones, yeah, ones the the hard work, the real hard work, a real that sort of style of fire. And then obviously <laughs> Eubanks, the flashy sort of in Dubai living the life. So <laughs> I like the contrast there. It's, it is a really, really interesting fight. Um just wanted to ask, um, now I'm looking at reading up on you obviously before it and, and stuff, and obviously a lot came out when you when you burst on the scene over the last six months from from different interviews. Just about your journey from football to, to boxing. I mean, how long ago does that feel to you now? <laughs> so I, I still I, I go I go and watch me, I go and watch a couple of games and you know, I still think to myself, I still think I, I miss it every single day and you know, I'd, I even even five aside and seven aside, and I just want to go and play with my mates. I just want to kick a football again, but I know the risk. It's it's not worth it. But I do really really miss football, and football took me away from from what probably would have been a very very different upbringing. Football was my escape from the 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 place I'm from, the people I grew up with, where where they are now. Either unfortunately, they either you know passed away committed suicide, uh, heroin addicts. You, d- you don't see anyone there on the street. You don't see anybody who I grew up with. And, and it, it was, it wasn't a very, it wasn't the best of estates. It was, it, you know, my mom and dad done everything that they could for, for, for the family. And, and I think if I didn't have football, I think I would have, I would have, you know, been somewhere different. So football got, I, I traveled the world with football and, and I'm so grateful that that I'm I was always mentality sports related, and I always saw that. that. So when I transitioned from football to boxing off the back of an injury, I was in Hong Kong too. I signed for South China in Hong Kong 2013. Snapped the ligaments in my ankle in the December. Come home in the February because the thing is with Hong Kong, you're only allowed three expats to play outside of Hong Kong. So from for them to have me was a total total waste of a signing really. Um so so the released us and I come home and I saw I'd been to Hong Kong, I had been to Chicago in 2011. I played in Chicago for 12 months and then come home, sign for Blythe and and I knew when I got released off released off Leeds at 16 that, that you know football I was I wasn't going to be a premiership footballer which you sort of grow up thinking you will be and I remember joining. I remember having no, you know, the ligaments in my ankle that they took some. They took four from my hamstring, put them in my ankle, and I remember walking into a gym in February, twenty-three stone, thinking, "I've all I've done is played sport, and you know, all I've all I've done growing up and and what have you has been involved in sport, been involved in training." I joined a gym in the February, and and I said, uh, I said uh, the, the the owner of the gym, who's who's Mark, who's now my coach and manager, I said, listen, I, I need to lose weight quick. Um, what's the best thing? And he said, oh, boxer size. And they'd done a body sparring class on a Tuesday, a Tuesday night, um, and they had three, they had three guys who were pros at the time, in the gym. This was February two thousand fourteen. And I had three guys in the gym at the time, and uh, uh, three pros, and we'd done a body sparring class, and Mark kept them in the middle, and the people who were just on the fitness class would go in. And I remember going in, and 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 I remember sparring this guy called Curtis, body sparring. I, I hit him, and, and Mark come up to us at the end, and he went, "Listen, I want you to join the amateur class. You know, you've you've you look like you've you've got something about you. You're tall. You." You know, we need to drop the weight off, but it looks like you could, you could, you know, potentially have a few amateur fights if you would be interested. And I thought, I'll go along. I've, I'll, I'll, you know, I'd, I'll, I'll go along. And July 2014 was my first amateur fight, and I remember, I remember fighting, fighting, and I think I weighed in 134 kilo on my medical card. And I remember knocking the guy out in the second round and thinking, and I remember it was in a social club and there was probably 200 people there. And I remember the buzz and it just, I was just like, wow. And from then on, 
I, th- I think I've been in the camp ever since. I don't think I've ever left the gym. Um, <laughs> from then on, I had that mentality, that switch from football, switch to boxing, that I want to do something in this. I want to be somewhere and I want to fight. And from then, I, the weight started to come off. I started to, you know, fight more and more. And I had 44 amateur fights, lost six box for my country. So I was, you know, I, I started very late, but at the same time, I think, it's again it's it's something that you know it's took us away from what could have been and I could have ended up thinking okay well I've missed my childhood because of football I've missed the enjoyment of going out on the drink and and, and enjoying things with the lads and I've never touched a drug in my life so should I play catch up but because I found boxing again that took us away from from all that mentality and again it's been a massive escape for me mentally and, and physically to, to find a different path in life. And I think I think boxing is fantastic for that, uh, to, to take people away from the street and just make them focus on something. And it's a very dedicated sport. Yeah, sport's, sport's brilliant for, for changing lives. And um, just, a, yeah, I'm just really, it's a really captivating stuff you're saying. And there's, a, there's so many things I could ask about, but obviously it's just it's just great that you found um, found where you are now because obviously... You're flying at the moment, and it's just great to see you doing so well. Um, but like you said, you, you start, you know, you're in it a bit later than perhaps people do normally start. Um, four fights in at 31. I mean, you say you want to fight six times, you know, this year or five times this year, whatever it will be in the end. How long are you looking to be in boxing for? Is it just a case of seeing how far you can get and riding the wave? I guess there's no real anything other than that. Again, I started. I started boxing not expecting to be where I am now. Um, so, um, for me, if 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 I can, if I can, when I when I when I do something, when I see myself on Sky, and when I do something, I'm I'm doing boxing for every average person who's sitting on a sofa, wishing and dreaming that they could do something, whether that be a sport, whether that be a job role, whether that be in, you know, applying for applying for the manager's job at work or going in it going and applying for a job or joining a new club, whether you be a kid or an adult. I'm I just want to do it for every average person who's sitting thinking, well, I want to do something with my life. I want to do something because, you know, I never expected to be where I am now. I got released at Leeds off 16 and I, I hit I hit a point where I thought Shit, I've I've not stuck in at school. I've got no GCSEs because I thought I was going to be a Premiership footballer. I've 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 I was a little shit, and you know I I don't know what to do now. I've been released off Leeds, and fortunately, I say with Darlington and things, football progressed to a point where I ended up in America, then I ended up in Hong Kong. But if that hadn't have happened, you know it. it as I say, it could have it could have been very different. So, but boxing where I am now is it, five six years ago. You, you look at the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo, Ibrahimovic, Jordan Henderson, James Milner. You know the 34, 35, 36, 38 year old and still playing at the top level. Now, if somebody had said ten years ago. You know, a, a, a person peaks at 31, 32. They're at the best. Cristiano Ronaldo is still absolutely, Ibrahimovic is still where they were three, four years ago. And I think things have changed. Science has changed. Nutrition's changed. Gyms have changed. So when you see the likes of Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali, they all were all retired at sort of 28, 29. And, and they, had, they had won everything at 18, 19, 20. It's, Things have changed. You look at where Joe Joyce is now. You look at where Babich is now. And, you know, Dillian White, Pavekin's just beat Dillian White. Obviously, Dillian got him in the rematch, but Pavekin was 40 year old. Then you've got Pulev, you know, who's who's still getting their big shots at 42. You've got Lucas Brown. So it is something where that does get in my head where I think, I see the likes of Daniel Dubois and Nathan Gorman at 24, 25 coming up, and I think, well, I'll, you know, I'm, I'm, I've got six year on them when they're higher than me. What's the point in boxing? But at the same time, I'm, then I look at the likes of Dillian White and the likes of George Joyce and the likes of Pavekin Pulev, and I think, well, 
if they can do it at 35, 36, 37, 38 and onwards, why, why, why can't I? I live the life. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't go out. I train. I eat, breathe, sleep, boxing. My nutrition's on point. My supplements are on point. So, you know, I've probably still got another two, three year until I peak, realistically. So, I think, I think to myself, if I can get a British, an English, or a Commonwealth title in the next eighteen months, then the world's my oyster. And I do believe that because if I didn't, there'd be no point in being where I am and, and putting in the dedication I'm putting in if I didn't believe in myself. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, in looking at some type of opponent for this year, I mean, when you're looking at the heavyweight division and someone who faces all the prospects or people who are early on in the career is someone like, you know, Kamil Sokolovsky, who's obviously faced the plethora of, of young people, um, young prospects. Is that something you would love to take on by the end of this year? Is that the sort of level you'd, you'd aspire to be? Definitely. It, it, at the same time, you've got a lot of people. A lot of people have this mentality of boxers. You know, boxers choose the fights. At the end of the day, boxing's a business, and Sky is. You know, Sky or my manager. It's you know, I I don't get a say of anything. By the way. And, and this is what people don't understand with boxing. People go, oh, he's dodging him, he's dodging him, he's dodging him. Listen, it's got absolutely nothing to do. With, I'll, I'll, I'd fight Anthony Joshua tomorrow. I'm not saying I'd win. I wouldn't win. But if someone rang me and said, oh, Joshua wants to fight you, do you want to go down? Do you want to go down and fight me? But yeah, I've got, because I've got the mentality of... I'm a fighter, and I, you know whoever's in front of us. I'm going to. I'm going to. It's Valhalla. You know, it's, whoever's in front of us. I'm, I'm either going to knock you out, you're going to knock me out. What, whatever happens, happens. But and that's why you've got a management team to make sure that you know things are right. And if if Sky want me to fight Sokolowski, yeah, I'll fight them. Um, the the give us a name, D L Jones. Um, that was he was meant to be the fight on the card of show. He was had twelve. Uh, one ten, lost two. We lost against De Bruyne Bacoli. So he was a good opponent, uh, but he was already in contract to fight somebody on a on a MTK show. Um, so he he couldn't fight. But that's a fight, you know, that could probably possibly happen in the next in the next few months. So uh, Sokolowski, if somebody like Camille Sokolowski, you know, gets off at us, then personally. As 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 a fighter, yeah, I'll take it. But listen, Sky Sky aren't stupid. My manager's not stupid. They know where to put us, when to put us there, and they'll build us up in the right way and make sure that the fights are right at the right time, like they will with everyone, like they did with Babich, like they have done with Johnny Fisher, like they have done with you know Solomon, the up and comers, and you'll 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 see, you know, they they're not the the businessmen at the end of the day. And, Boxing, as much as it's a sport, it's a business as well. So, you know, the the, the unfortunately, I don't get a say of who who I'm going to fight. And well, as I say, my mentality is is then yeah, of course, of course, I would fight somebody um, like Sokolowski. And you know, he's he's a fantastic fighter, and he, he's constantly on your chest, and you have to have your wits about you and box well against him. And otherwise, he will cause an upset, like we've seen with. With the likes of Alex Dickinson, Nick Webb, you know he's he's beat a lot of people who people wouldn't expect him to be. But he only become a journeyman off the back of losing to Dillian White. You know he wasn't. He was never going to be a journeyman. He shouldn't ever be a journeyman. But he lost a fight early on against Dillian White. And I think from the back of that, he he saw the people people put him down as a journeyman, which I definitely disagree with, to be honest. But. Yeah, no, I just thought it'd be this type of fight would be be good for you for, for the, you know at some point this year. It's something like you say that the guy you mentioned as well, he'd be great as well for that experience. But in terms of being you know being a jaw, they obviously imagine huge Newcastle fan. Um, you I'm sure you'd be asking boxer and and Ben Shalom at some point to, to stage a fight night in St James's Park is the dream I imagine. I mean, it's it's to be fair, it's it's talks that we've had. Um. It, there is there is talks for there to be a show at St James's Park uh, in the summer. Now whether that goes ahead or not, I don't know. But the them talks are on the table. So 
listen, if I can walk, I, I, you know, I remember my first game, it was it was Everton at home in the Carlin Cup in 1995. And I remember, you know, being there thinking, wow, imagine one day walking out. And obviously, like I say, being football mentality, I, I played a couple of games at St. James's Park, just in, in youth cups. And obviously there was no fans there, maybe it's one, 200 fans. But I remember just walking out that tunnel and, and just looking around and, and being in a 52,000 stadium that I'm at every single week watching watching my home team play, to, to, to walk out of that uh, 52,000, even 30,000 fans, you know, screaming and, and chanting whether whether it be for football or boxing would just be a dream come true. It's, and, and what's happening with Newcastle at the minute is, is unbelievable and what's happening in the city is unbelievable and for Bellingham are making massive signings and Newcastle's Newcastle's boxing scene at the minute with Callum French and Georgia and you know we've got Joe Laws and then we've just signed the McCormick brothers for Bellingham have just signed them so Newcastle's on a massive massive rise and with Tommy Hodgson as well and obviously we've got Savannah and Ritson and you know from the small hole shows to the to the top with the Newcastle's been overlooked in in sports for many years, whether it be football, whether it be boxing. And I think it's our turn now to showcase what Newcastle's about, show the passion and and the you know what what we as fans and what we as as fighters and and what have you are about. Yeah, so someone like Cyrus Patterson as well. There's just so many great fighters. Sure, yeah, yeah. So many great yeah. fighters coming out. Yeah, it's quite really underrated. I think it will explode in the next year. Few years, maybe it's it really um really become great. Um, just last few there, just 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 wanted to ask. Obviously, the, the Disney tattoos and everything. It's it's amazing that you you know you don't see many six foot seven heavyweight boxers with Disney tattoos. Yeah. It's it's great to see that you. It will be sort of a trailblazer for for some people because obviously it's 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 something you don't see very often, and it's great because obviously everyone loves Disney. <laughs> it, it's a it's a funny one because I think. I think a lot of people sort of are going, well, it's a gimmick, it's this, it's that, and it, it's genuinely not like from 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 an early age, my mom says that every single day should have to put Beauty and the Beast or Little Mermaid on. And then she says Lion King come out in 1996, she says, and all she should have to do was put Lion King on. And every 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 tattoo resembles something to me. Every Disney tattoo resembles something to me. And and Disney growing up was a massive thing. We'd have family nights where we'd sit and watch, you know, VHS Disney Disney VHSs. And as I say, that then as I grew up, I never I, I never grew out of loving Disney and the newer ones, the likes of Frozen and Moana and. You know, all of them I, I, I still love and Encanto's just come out and I'll sit and watch Encanto with, with my nieces and they'll, they'll have it on every time. I mean, and I get more excited that my nieces are coming knowing that they'll want to put <laughs> Disney Plus on. So it, it isn't a gimmick and it's it's a genuine thing, you know. I, I do genuinely love love Disney. Yeah, no, it just makes you feel young, I guess. I mean, when I watch it, it makes you feel like yeah. a kid again, which is where everyone loves to feel. What, what is your favourite? Do you have, is it The Lion King? Uh, yeah, so, so growing up, Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast and Lion King were just constantly mm. on for me, you know, uh, uh, they were just, but realistically, you know, back then there wasn't, it was, now it's all about songs and you look at Frozen, it's very like, you know, and then Canto and it's very, and Moana and it's very like, oh, like what, what sort of what you would say in a the theatre or a play and it's, it's, it's very like over the top, but Realistically, you look at the older ones, 90, 94, 95, 96, the likes of Lion King. Yeah, yeah, they had a few songs, but it was a film, it had a story, it was a re you know. So I think I think Beauty and the Beast, Lion King, and Little Mermaid for me has got to be my three, three all-time favourites. I love how, how deep it is. It's a real genuine love there. Oh, definitely. <laughs> <You're talking> definitely. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm what I'm really looking for. I mean, I've I grew up in sort of the Pixar sort of um, time of, of those films, and I I, I cannot wait for Lightyear. Um, that's yeah, coming out. yeah, oh my looks, god! Yeah, look, I got a little tear at the trailer, so I think I'll oh, be the trailer is the trailer is one of the best trailers I've ever seen. Oh my god, it's incredible! Yeah, um, I'm really, really looking forward to that. 
Um, just yeah, the whole time I've been talking, you've been talking. I just I hear the Geordie accent, and I've <laughs> about in lockdown we watched so much Geordie Shore, it was ridiculous. And the whole time yeah, I just. <laughs> I've got to say, I've never, I've never, I think, I think for me, I've never watched it because I know, and I, I know Scotty and I, I know Aaron really well uh, and Marty really well. And I just thought, I, I don't want to see them in that sort of light because I've grew up with them and I thought oh. I, I, that's not, that's not how I want to see. I want to see Aaron, Aaron's looking to turn pro actually. And he's, it looks like he's going to be on uh, the Newcastle card when they come to Newcastle. Um, so obviously Aaron had a great MMA. You know, he's 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 again he's he's not from the best of best of areas. He's, he hasn't had the best of upbringings, and you know he ended up he he worked offshore. Aaron, funnily enough, and he he was back on a weekend, and and the producer had seen him on a night out, and obviously he's a good looking kid, and he's got tattoos. And I remember the producer going up to him and saying, "Oh, listen, we'll do this thing called Geordie Shaw. Would you be interested?" And I think I think he he had been offshore for five six years, and I, I think he just sort of thought, "Oh, I'll, get, I'll give it a go." The money was, you know, the money wasn't too bad, and off the back of it, you know, he, he's he's become obviously an internet sensation, but he's still just an ordinary kid with that fight mentality. And Marty, Marty again, he's he's a fighter, and he's fighting again uh, on the twelfth of twelfth of February, Marty McKenna, and. You know, it's it's, and that's why I don't watch it because I don't want to see them in the in the sort of mouthing off to people and and drinking and because uh, I just think that's that's not how I know them. So, and I I kind of be the the whole women pissing the pants and that's not for me. That you know they giving us a bad name, which is exactly what they're half of them aren't even from Newcastle. <laughs> Charlotte's not from Newcastle. Holly's yes. not from Newcastle. So which is even more annoying that they're from places like Middlesbrough and stuff. So <laughs> Yeah. I just didn't expect it to be such a, a connection to be honest. Um that's that's cool though. It is. <laughs> um but yeah just lastly um February fifth looking to looking to come out start the new year strong. Yeah, it's like I said, yeah, I'll make sure, you know, if the knockouts there, the knockout will come. I know I know fine well that I you know, produced power. I know fine well that if if I land correctly, you're gonna to go to sleep. But at the same time, I'm not naive and, and thick to thinking that it's heavyweight box and if they land on me, it's gonna hurt me just as much as it's gonna hurt them. So, you know, I'll 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 make sure that it's a it's you know technically aggressive um, and if the knockout's there, if I see the knockout then the knockout will come that's that's a definitely, I know if me left on me right lands, you, you're going to sleep if it lands flush and what it's all about, like I say, making sure that, you know, it's a chess game isn't it, and making sure that the shot's there to be taken Yeah, can't wait for that, can't wait to see you back out again and, and excited to see you this year as well um, thanks so much for your time. It's been so great to talk. Just so no, relaxed. That, George. Thank you very much. It's been really fun just to just to dig into everything about you. It's been really, really interesting. There's a lot for me to pick out there. So, yeah, I can't wait to, to get back over this. And thanks for your time. No, again. thank you for having us, mate. I appreciate no it. Like I said, it's at the start. Thank you. Great. Nice one, mate. Cheers. Hopefully we can... Uh, Link up again in the future after after some fight. Well. Yeah, I mean, it's just no problem at all. Just uh, I'm a nightmare. I'm an absolute nightmare for for like timing and what have you. But just let us know, and and you know, if something's not, if if I'm home and everything's good, then I'll. That's no problem whatsoever. And you know, we'll we'll sort out we'll sort out another time and date. No problem at all. Nice one, absolute top man. Um, have a great day. Have a great weekend. Lovely and, um, seeing you. Have a lovely weekend, George. Thanks, mate. See you in a bit. Bye.